Hi, my name is Terry Burnham, and I'm a finance professor at Chapman University in Orange, California. I'm a interested in the uh, evolutionary basis of economic and financial behavior. Uh, I really believe that the notion of mismatch is central to all human behavior. I'm an economist, so I care a lot about economic behavior, but uh, we pursue goals that um, don't make any sense from a modern environment, and uh, one needs to think about the past to understand them. If you think that economic behavior has its roots in some sort of uh, biological notion, then one would think that people would care a lot about items that lead to survival and reproduction. Uh, and for modern industrialized humans, there are a lot of people who are poor, who are hungry, but for a lot of people in rich societies, those problems are completely solved. And so what are you left with? And uh, the answer is that um, we pursue goals that only make sense in the evolutionary context. Why does Raj Rajaratnam go to jail He's already a billionaire and he gets convicted for stealing an extra couple million dollars. Well, it only makes sense if you think that humans have some uh, goal to always have relative success, mm -hmm. which makes a lot of sense in an evolutionary point of view. It makes no sense at all. Uh, Raj Raj Ratna, if you've ever seen a picture, but certainly doesn't need to eat any more food. And that's the last thing he needs to do. And yet he's now in prison. What he should have done is gone on a diet and worked out and not be in prison. But um, his drives are coming from a different era and one can't understand about an evolutionary point of view. So economics and evolution still are very far apart. Uh, in economics, there are two main schools. There are neoclassical economists. These are sort of standard, if you had your textbook, economists. And then there are behavioral economists. And then there's one or two, you know, the equivalent of a, of a, of a black swan, one or two people who care about evolution. So the revolution that's occurred in economics in the last 30 years or so is the behavioral revolution it has nothing to do with evolution. So neither school of thought has anything to do with evolution. Um, those of us who are interested in these sorts of issues like Robert Frank at Cornell or David Sloan Wilson or, or myself, um, we think that you can't understand human nature, where those drives come from, unless you understand evolution. So as an example, caring about relative payoffs, if humans really care a lot about relative payoffs, uh, which seems to be important, um, then uh, what you want to do is think about the connection between relative status and fitness in an ancestral environment. And if it makes sense in that environment, then we might still care about it in this environment, even though it doesn't matter at all. Bill Gates has his two kids. I've got three. I'm winning, right, uh, from that perspective. but. Uh, obviously, the you know the number of babies we have today has, has nothing to do with uh, directly to the to, to the to the drives. But to understand what the motivations are, uh, those weird biological evolutionary economists that, that out there, those few of us, um, we think it's really important to think about the evolutionary setting. Having a good view of human nature is important to having good policy goals, and um, uh, the behavioral economists think they have their view uh, of human nature, but the evolutionary view. Uh, I think can um, can add, add add more to that. Um, so just to give you an example, right here in this you know, where we're doing this interview, there's a sign behind it that says "Return Your Books," and on it has a pair of um, an image of human eyes. Well, some of the research in this area has shown that people are nicer when there are images of eyes in the environment. Well, what's the reason for that? Well, the reason is that. In ancestral environments, if there was an image of an eye in the environment, there was actually an eye in the environment, and what you were doing was going to be reported to somebody else through gossip. So that notion that you should care about the ancestral environment, and this is a very simple example, if you want the books returned to your library, put the eyes in the environment, uh, that would never come from a neoclassical economist, nor would it come from a behavioral economist. It would only come from an evolutionary economist. And that notion writ large, um, in principle, could help us with anything we're interested in.